Let's kick it off with the big story of the yes, day. Indeed. That's right, making headlines again. The Washington Commanders and their QB situation. This is the new guy on the team. Jacoby Brissett added okay. to the roster just after signing second year Samuel Howell. No one knows who is set to be QB1 at this point. We do know this likely takes them out of the play for Lamar Jackson. So, of course, Jacoby Brissett uh, back in the lineup. He, he's been like the historic backup quarterback in the NFL. Man. And he's coming here. But they told him, listen, you got to compete. Maybe you're up for QB1. Sure. sure. Look, I, can I he look compete? at this. Can he compete? Mm -hmm. He can absolutely compete. And I don't want to uh, I don't want to jump the uh, the cow here, Joe, and go above to the ending of this. But don't be surprised if Jacoby Brissett is not the starting quarterback for the commanders Woo! as okay. of week four or week five. I know call. that there's a lot of people at home. They're throwing things at the television right now. They're calling me all sorts the names, but Sam Howe, the young man has talent. You look at his high school career, he was a parade All-American. You look at his first two years in North Carolina, he took the world on fire there, but his junior year, there were questions. That's why he slid down the board. You bring in someone like Jacoby Brissett, who Marina, as you said, has stepped in and been a starter in Cleveland. He stepped in and was a starter in Miami and New England as well. He can run an offense and do everything that the commanders need to win 19 games this year. And listen, uh -oh. he's been privy to uh -oh. Super Bowl before, uh -oh. something Sam Hamill has not been. Right. So, uh, Chad Ricardo with his take. <laughs> Let's bring in Ben Standig with The Athletic right now live with us again. Ben, good to see you. A lot of Commander's news this week, obviously. Break it down. What do you think? Who's going to be QB1? Do you think they're sticking with Ham Howell, at least for now? It, it's a great question. Like, when the season broke and we had a feeling that this would be the type of path they would go down, I think Jacoby Brissett was probably like very high, if not sure. atop the realistic tier that we're looking at in terms of what this team could do. But when Washington started saying that Sam Howell was going to enter the offseason as QB1, that he would be given the opportunity, it felt like, well, maybe then Brissett's too good on some level. Mm. Because realistically, if they're going head to head, Howell with a one career start, Brissett's been a guy that has started. Uh, throughout his career, but though mostly a backup, but has had three years with at least 11 starts, that he would could logically win. I'm gonna guess for now they're gonna continue to go down the path of Sam Howe and hope he just doesn't, you know, uh, blow it basically. Uh, but Brissett is there, and he's a guy that you know, he started 11 games last year for Cleveland. He's, you know, not a, a top tier quarterback, but you can win with him. And you know, for a team that's got a good defense and, and offensive playmakers, he might be enough to get them another couple of wins, but I still would guess right now that they lean towards how and hope for that upside. Ben, what is the calculus here? When you look at financially, you bring in someone like Eric Bieniemy. Are you giving him the right tools to succeed with someone like you say, like Sam Howell, who's got potential, but we haven't seen him produce the W's. You got Jacoby, who's got the expertise, but he's never been really a true starter. Are they really not willing to invest in this QB program, at least not for now, because they've got the offensive coordinator they want yeah I mean you know I think there's a there, there's definitely a desire to improve the position and improve it significantly you know the first couple of years here Ron Rivera tried to get Matthew Stafford he tried to get Russell Wilson he did trade for Carson Wentz um, so he has tried whatever that is worth but they've not been fortunate when it comes to their draft positioning same uh, a, a case uh, this year uh, at 16 they're really gonna be out of the mix for the top younger prospects in the draft and then in terms of the whether it's Lamar Jackson or Derek Carr I mean these guys do cost a lot of money and picks and you know there's always a, a give and take of whether it makes sense to do that but Washington I think is looking at it like we've got a lot of other pieces we don't want to break them all up so let's try to find something that's sort of you know sort of in the middle of all that I think it's weird but I think it's true Washington has maybe one of the least desirable quarterback situations on paper <laughs> yeah. while, simultane while simultaneously improving over what they had last yeah. year. So it is a weird dynamic in that regard, but they could be better even if they don't have somebody that's like, wow, this is an obvious starter. Huh. Okay. You, what, what you Look, I, I think that this is an ideal package that they put together here because Sam Howell does have talent. And now, though, you have a proven backup who, if Sam Howell at the bottom falls out, you can go to Jacoby Brissett. I think that the commanders have actually placed themselves in a very good position. All right. I'm we'll going to give me a Brissett jersey. Listen, uh, <laughs> Ben and Chad, let's not forget that Taylor Heineke had some wins under his belt as well, and we let him go for $20 million to Atlanta. So right. yeah. there's that, too. We'll see how that works out. Ben, good.
Good seeing you again, and, and hopefully next week we've got some better positive news for Commanders fans. We'll wait and see. We'll see. Thanks a lot.